Hello, Pedro here. In this quick flow, I'm going to build a Penrose triangle. It's this impossible shape where we, you can see this little sphere going on forever and ever. And it's usually built by through the optical illusion of having shapes like this aligned to the viewer at a specific angle so that it looks like a closed, continuous triangle or frame instead of an open one like this. When I saw this little sphere and I saw that it does a smooth turn instead of a 90 degrees turn as this seems to be, I thought why not do a smoother version where things can slide in a smoother fashion. So one of the things that I come up with was this one where I have this wood texture sliding along and also some, some depth of field blur so that it guides the viewer's eye. Now this was part modeling, part composition and basically it uses some UV values to map a texture onto uh, the uh, geometry. So the way I decided to go about it, that was easier to me, was just have uh, a single portion of the mesh with the uh, UV values, then triplicate it and rotate it so that I have the complete object. Then to finish off after the texturing part, I just applied a shading pass on top of it so I have a better notion of the, the volume of the object. Now the mesh itself, it's very simple and it follows whatever are the requirements for the composition part. So uh, initially in an orthographic view, it looks like this, so it's very similar. But as I rotate the object, you can see that uh, what's actually going on. So it's a very simple object and I'm only going to actually output this top part that's going to be continuous and it's going to be very easy for me to have UV values that go on the U from 0 to 1 so that it's much easier to, to apply uh, the texture afterwards. So I could have uh, created uh, the UVs in a way that I would have the same thing on all three sides but I just thought this was just easier. Just get this one part right and then just you know triplicate it, rotate it around and you're done. So uh, first I'm going to look into Houdini and then someone will do the uh, composition part. So first thing in Houdini I'm going to do is create a box, have some divisions, so set this to 333 three, three, and also copy and move it, so copy and transform and on the translate I'm going to put 111. So with this I have the points necessary to create my shape, so curve, sop, leave these in the background, turn on snapping and now I can snap into this position, this, this and this, and turn off snapping and now if I look from uh, an orthographic point of view, I come here and I look from this point here, you can see that I have my triangular shape in there. I, I'm looking at it from this specific position but you know it's the easiest way to draw this. So let me sweep this and I'm going to use the curve as the backbone and as a profile I'm going to use the circle. The circle will be, uh, let's see how this looks, the circle will, will be set to polygon with four divisions and let's say size 0.2 and it's going to be an open arc. So you, you see that I have four points but I need five for the UVs and so I'm going to put open arc and now you see that I have five and the orientation is also like 45 degrees and I'm not interested in that so I'm going to put 45 in here and 360 plus 45. So with this I get you know, a regular, uh, more, more normal shape. Uh, so I can come here to the sweep, put skin unclosed and there's my shape. Now if I bevel this curve, uh, this, these things here will be fixed. So I'm going to just do the bevel, set it to point and give it some distance. Like so 0.25. Now 16 divisions seem to be a fair amount to have a smooth render. And so you can see that right away if I come and look to my shape from this point of view that I'm done. But I still need to do some, some things. So I need to create the UVs and for rendering it's going to be much easier if this shape is aligned with the Z axis. So first thing to do is to center it. So this point here, the center of my shape should be at the origin. So I need to find that position and uh, the easiest way to go about it I think is to just put here a blast sop, select the, uh, the first and the last point and delete them. So now I'm just left with three points and to find the centroid of these three positions I'm going to put a primitive and I'm going to scale this primitive to zero. So scale zero 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 and I got this little point. If I turn on the point display, put this in the background, you can see that this point 
is the centroid of this triangular shape. So I'm going to subtract this position to these uh, to these points. So to do that, I'm going to do a wrangle, attribute wrangle, I'm going to put this in the this input and P minus equal. So I subtract and I'm going to access that position with point first in, input one attribute position and point number zero. And by doing that, I can have my shape with its center at the origin. Now, I also want to align it with the Z axis. And this one is a bit more tricky, but it's explainable. So this position that I'm looking to my mesh through is a position that is along this direction. Build up here a vector draw. So this direction here is let's say one, one, one. And so it's like my mesh is transformed, is aligned with this direction. And I actually want it to be aligned with the direction zero, one. So in order to rotate this back into this position, I'm going to use a function called look at, which has as a, a, like a reference direction, the Z axis. And I can say, well, what's the rotation matrix if I look at this direction from the origin? And so that will give me a matrix. Now to come back, so this, this would allow me to go from this direction to this direction. To come back from this direction to this direction, I just need to, instead of multiplying my point positions by M, I multiply by the inverse of M. So that's what I'm going to do. And so I'm going to create the matrix and I'm going to call it a line and it's going to be equal to the look at function looking from the position 0, 0, 0 to the position 1, 1, 1. And so now I can transform my points by multiplying by the matrix. But instead of the matrix as it is, I'm going to invert it because I actually want the inverse transformation. So a line. And then as I do this, if I set here the viewport to front, you see that I got my shape aligned with the Z axis. Now at the moment, this configuration, you know, have this side, that this tip uh, on the uh, looking at the, the left side, but in here I actually have it orientated to the right side. So to fix that, I'm just going to come in here and put uh, negate this vector. So I'm going to multiply by minus one. And by doing that, I get the same thing that I have in here. Great. So now you'll notice that I have these polygons in the way. They are sort of breaking the optical illusion. So I'm going to delete all the polygons that are facing the negative Z direction. And to do that, I'm just going to put here a delete, turn off the base group, come here to normal, enable it and just put 90 degrees in here. So polygons that are have a 90 degree angle with this direction will be deleted. And so now if I put here front, set view front, you can see that I got my shape well done. Great, now I need to build the UVs. So for the UVs to be built, I need to come here back to my, my backbone. I need to convert it into a NURBS curve. And with that, that can be done with a fade sop set to interpolation and the UV order set to two. And then I can use a UV texture sop. It must be set to point, otherwise it won't work with a sweep. And I want to use here the arc length spline. So if I come here to the UV view, you can see that I have those positions in there. So they have the same relative the distance between them as they have in the 3D world. So I can put that in there. And you can see that through the sweep right away, I have those UV values. Now I need the U, so I have the U values, now, now I need the, the V values, and those come from the profile. So I'm gonna put an attribute wrangle in my circle. And so I have five positions. And so the easiest way to distribute them between zero and one is to do, say I'm gonna call this attribute Y and do ptnum divided by at num pt minus one, meaning the point number divided by the total amount of points minus one, just because these start at zero. So uh, this doesn't work very well because these two are integer attributes. And so this will be an integer division. And so to do that, I need to convert this first one into a float. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a float variable called ptnum 
and it's going to be equal to add ptno. And so here, instead of using the attribute, which is integer, I'm going to use the variable, which is float. And by doing that, now I have the, these values distributed between zero and one. Great, so I'm just gonna plug this in here. And in here, I'm going to copy these values to the y-axis of the UV. So I'm gonna do v at UV dot y is equal to at y. And if I check the UV view, you can see that now I have proper UV values. Great. Now you'll notice that as I delete those polygons that interfere with the rendering, I have some portions that disappear. Actually, the only part that I want to have uh, UV values as I show in this image is this top part here. So how can I isolate it and have it to fill the UV space properly? Well, before deleting, I can put a group by range and I can select one of four. So my profile has four sides. So for each step, it's going to generate four polygons. And so if I come here and check the result of this, let's see. Okay, so it selected this strip, but I actually want this strip. So I'm going to offset this. And so this is the right strip. So now when I delete the polygons that are not facing the camera, I can see that I get this. And if I come here to this selection mode, these are the, the polygons that I want. Great. So one way to have them fit the UV space, they are right here. One way to have them uh, fit the UV space from zero to one so that it's easier to me in the comp to adjust the texture is to split the mesh. And I'm gonna split the mesh here using that group that I've just created. So now they are isolated and I can put a UV layout. So now with this UV layout, I have it fill the, the UV space. And so just need to come here to scale error tolerance and put it to zero so that the, the, the space filling is a little bit better. Otherwise, it's gonna be, it's gonna have this little nudge that it's not going to use and I want that. So great, so now I have this UV done right. I'm gonna merge everything back. Put this here, here. And I don't care that those are in there. They are not going to interfere with, with my setup. So now I just need to, I guess I should set up a camera. So at the moment I got this. So if I'm just gonna come in here and put this, so create a camera. And I just need to make sure that the, cam the camera is centered on my shape, because if you remember, I'm going to rotate this render. And so the center of rotation should be the center of the render. Okay, so let me uh, put this zero here, zero. So now this is centered and now I need some materials, so. Material shop, get a material network and a builder. This one is going to be called UV and inside of it, it will have a bind and I'm going to put here a UV on the bind, set it to vector. And so these are, you know, there's no lighting solution. This is a very simple thing. If I come uh, right away, if I assign the material to the group, I set here the UV material builder just go to the render view, click render. Um, you'll notice that only that portion will have those UV values. Now I want to have the rest of the mesh to be invisible. And so for that, I'm going to create another material. And this one is going to be called uh, mate. And so I'm here to the material shop, create another one, select the group again, but this time invert it, this to mate. And now at, this, at the moment, it's the same thing, but what I want to do is put here a constant set to zero. And you notice that if, for example, if I put this zero on the opacity, I'm gonna get this portion here and I don't want it. I, I actually want the rest of the mesh to cut off this portion, just like I have in here. So this is cut off, I need this cut off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the alpha and the alpha right away will be cut off. So as you can see if you put here, so the alpha is cut off, but the color is still white. So I'm gonna put also on the color. So now I have both the color and the alpha cut off there. Great. Now, if I come and put this, this is what I want to render, uh, but I also want to have a shading pass. And at the moment, if I come here and I put this, this is not a very interesting shading pass. And you also can see the cut. So the trick to have a uh, you know, good lights for this sort of setup is to have the lights 
perpendicular to the camera. So the camera is facing this direction, the z-axis. So I want lights, which direction is on the x or y plane. And so I'm just going to come here and put some lights. And to, to have them have a little bit of softness, I'm going to set this as a sunlight. And so I'm going to have to have them perpendicular to the camera direction. So I'm going to rotate 90 degrees on the Y axis and then have something like this. Let me see through the camera. I think like this looks all right. I'm going to have another light. So this way I sort of have, you know, three shading values, a very light one, a mid-tone, and uh, a dark one Let's see so let me say 120 and this one let's say 25 let's say 125 something like this yeah so this one is quite light this is sort of a mid-tone and this one is darker than than the others i think i think this this is fair maybe like maybe like this Okay, cool. So now if I come back to the render view, you notice that I have a much more interesting uh, render uh, for, for the shading. If I would actually let me here a new floating panel and scene view, and you notice if I stray away from this perpendicular direction from the camera, I'm gonna start to notice uh, the cut. So you, you even see some shadow being cut right there. So this is going to break the optical illusion. So I need to, I need to, uh, to, to stick with uh, that direction that is uh, perpendicular to to the camera otherwise you know these things are going to start to show up and i don't i don't want them great so let me uh let's see yeah this looks good i'm just going to set up two mantra rops so mantra rop one will be called uv and in this one i'm actually not gonna have any any shading, uh, sorry, any anti-aliasing. So I'm going to disable edge anti-aliasing. And I'm also going to uh, put sub-pixel output. This will output uh, an image that is three, three times the size, but it's also better for later to uh, comp the, the anti-aliasing. And so I'm also gonna put another one in here called shading that I'm actually going to have some edge anti-aliasing and also not gonna do sub-pixel output. Great, so now I just need to render both of them. So in this in this case, I have the shading showing up. So I'm just gonna render that and it's gonna render in the background. And then I go to the UV one and I'm gonna render that as well. And so I've rendered my elements for the composition. So let's look at those. And here in the view, I can see the shading pass. Maybe I need to re-render with some normals, but otherwise looks fine. And I also have here the UV pass, which is three times the size, but that will help me to apply the uh, the mapping and then scale down and have some nice smooth edges. So next video, the composition part will be taken care of.